Yes. So hi everyone, welcome to the first SBA online meetup of 2021. A very exciting theme today is how to pay your crypto taxes in Sweden. So just a quick explanation about the format of the webinar before we invite our guest speaker. Um, you'll be very interactive. Um, if you guys have any questions, you don't have to wait until the end. You can write them in the chat room, but please don't speak. I would read the questions myself. And um, yeah, so just keep the questions coming. And first of all, I'd like to introduce Sukesh Tadler. He's also, actually, let me introduce myself for people that don't know. <laughs> it's the first time joining. Uh, my name is Ana Paula Picasso. I'm one of the board members of SBA. And also I'm a founder of Blockchain PR. I also have a blockchain focused podcast called Blockchain Beat, B-A-T. So if you guys go and check it out on your Spotify, iTunes, etc. You can see me there. And I'm here with Sukesh Tadla. He's also a board member of SBA. Hi, Sukesh. Say hi to everyone. <laughs> hey. And he will be doing a quick demo of his project called Crypto Scat. It's a software solution for paying your crypto taxes so it's very uh, connected we'll be talking about so you guys stick around until the end and um, our guest speaker is Johan Johan Fagelund Schoberry hi Johan hi thank you for uh, having me so we invited Johan he, uh, because he is a Swedish law lawyer he's been working for 80 years with five years experience in tax as a tax lawyer representing individuals and companies in tax litigation with the Swedish tax authority. So it sounds very, <laughs> sounds very scary, but uh, litigation, but he knows he's an expert. He has a very comprehensive knowledge about crypto taxes. So that's why we invite you, Johan. And I just want to, do you want to say something about SBA, Sukesh, or we say at the end? Uh, yes, sure, we can quickly uh, talk about Yes, SBA. just a quick intro before we call Johan and what SBA is yes. and what we do. Yeah, sure. So um, for everyone joining in, uh, I'm really glad to see everyone here uh, joining in for the first SBA meetup of the year. So uh, it's going to be about taxes. Uh, I'm really excited and actually intrigued to see so many people joining in about this topic. So uh, yeah, we did some good decisions. Uh, so uh, just so you know, like this meeting is being recorded. Uh, so it will be shared later on. Uh, so people are writing to me. So I just want to say that. And uh, before going further, just quickly about Swedish Blockchain Association. So it's a nonprofit organization, uh, been active for almost uh, four years now. Uh, so we have been doing, um, we have been organizing events, um, like we did Blockspo uh, back in 2018. Uh, and since last year, we have been doing virtual events uh, almost uh, every month. Uh, so our purpose is to basically uh, educate, engage, and uh, uh, empower people here in the Nordic region uh, about the cryptocurrency and the blockchain world. So we help out companies, we help out uh, individuals uh, in relation to different questions uh, about blockchain technology uh, and so forth. Uh, that said, uh, let's get started. Um, and I want to officially welcome Johan. Um, and, and if you have something to add. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, being a lawyer, everything has to come with a caveat. So I think I would start by saying that this is not tax advice. You can't really uh, pursue me in court for, for actually what I'm about to say. And if you have sort of any specific questions relating to your personal tax situation, you should consult a professional tax advisor. I see we have one with us here, so he can probably hand out his business card after the, uh, 
after I've talked uh, and also correct me for, for any mistakes I might be doing. Uh, but this is a, a space that I'm, I'm not that, I'm obviously I'm, I'm familiar with it from a tax perspective, but I'm not a developer. I'm not as co competent as, as many of the guests in here probably are when it comes to uh, reviewing code, being involved in the sort of blockchain technology and you know everything that comes with it, the, the very fast development, it's very hard to keep track of what's happening. But, but I'm only here to comment sort of from the, uh, from the old world's perspective on how it's looked upon and, uh, and how it's treated to some extent, because it's not always clear how things are supposed to be treated as of now, but, it, but it's going to develop uh, in the future, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think everybody here is learning as we go along as well, Johan. And I certainly am myself. And uh, so I want to kick start with a question. Um, as a two in one question, uh, do people pay taxes on crypto in Sweden? And if yes, um, is crypto seen as a currency or an asset? Well, I mean, do people pay taxes? I think a lot of people ha have declared their income, but I think that, that the number of people that haven't or you know, are unsure whether or not they should be doing it is quite high. And I think that the Swedish tax authority has done a lot of information about the fact that it needs to be taxed and also trying to help people to do it right. Uh, with, as I said, I mentioned it briefly with all the new technologies, it, it becomes increasingly hard for, for especially new products and how they are supposed to be treated. So I think there are a lot of people who hasn't taxed or, you know, could be taxed at a later stage if they, they ever found out that they held assets or sold assets. Um, but going back to, to your next question, is it a currency? It's definitely a currency, but it's not seen as a, a currency special to US dollar. It's still but it's still something that you have to to um, to pay taxes on. I think that's that's clear. Okay, so here in Sweden is seen as a currency. Yeah. That's that's my view. Yes, so I mean that, yeah. that might have changed, but that's my view. It's it's another uh -huh. currency. And now you have focus more on individuals on individual level. Let's say me, um, I'm buying cryptocurrencies, etc. So how does that work? What's the normal and buy sell transactions classified? It, it works essentially like investing is um, um, investing. I'm reading the chat while I'm speaking. And that's not a good idea. <laughs> essentially, it's working like you buy a stock and you sell a stock. So, so you have an acquisition acquisition value or the value that you you buy the currency for, and then when you sell it, you can deduct that as as sort of the the cost for for acquiring the currency. And then you sell them uh, and you pay taxes on the sort of capital gain. So if you buy for 50, then you sell for 100, you essentially pay taxes on the 50, that's sort of the, the, um, the gain after your costs. Mm -hmm. so, so that's a very basic example. And if you only hold, for example, you buy a lot of currencies when you never sort of sell them, that's not a taxable event. It's only actually the sell or, or if you give it to somebody, um, it's, it's not taxable if it's a gift. But if you trade it for something else, uh, it's also a taxable event. But as long as you just hold it, uh, that's not taxable. Okay, so if you just buy, don't do anything, just keep it holding that they don't need to declare that. Yeah, at exactly. least I think, I think this is limited to Sweden, right? Like in, for instance, in US, they have uh, a concept where you have to even declare if you hold cryptocurrencies as well. Right. Right. I should have said that in the beginning. This is only applicable to Sweden and people who are only tax tax liable in Sweden. Obviously, there are a lot of people in the crypto space who may be, uh, you know, double citizenship, double, you know, living in two countries. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, yeah. That that you know, this is not applicable for you. I'm only talking from a Swedish perspective. I know something about international mm -hmm. taxation and how how things work that way, but it, it all of this is limited to to how Sweden sees it as of today. I see. I think, yeah, no, we're trying to keep it things very um, focused here in Sweden and have a very interesting question here from Victor. Hey, Victor. Uh, he said, so if you buy a Tesla for your, for your Bitcoin, that counts as a taxable event. Is there a question? It's a question. Yeah, it's a very good question, actually. What happens when you buy a Tesla for Bitcoin? I, obviously, I know that they're actually accepting Bitcoin and that they're not doing any exchange, but you actually do an exchange of a Bitcoin for a Tesla. So essentially, your Bitcoin would have to be transacted into Swedish kroners where, where you change that for, for the currency. So 
So that is, in my view at least, uh, a taxable event. Yes, that's mm -hmm, true. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Even if you hold in it, but then you buy something that is a taxable event. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, how another question as well? Some people are asking about cryptocurrency exchanges and. Uh, is there any specific exchange that's preferred? Some people mention Coinbase, Binance, or it does not matter. It matters where you are registered. No, it doesn't really matter where you're registered. I'm, I, I would only say from a practical perspective, it will obviously having all of the information in one, um, one exchange could help you when you're declaring the taxes, but it doesn't really matter if you do it privately, if you go out sort of on the, on the street and, and sell Bitcoins and, and somebody gives you money in your hand, that's still mm -hmm. a taxable event. But obviously in terms of documentation, that, that would still be um, equivalent. Okay. Or okay. easier with the documentation if you have everything on the same page. Yeah. But on the other hand, I mean, an exchange could go down. You have this sort of Mt. Gox and everything in history okay. where, where a lot of people have lost documentation. And, and then it becomes a problem because you obviously you can't really prove that you, where, what you bought them for or, or something like that. So, so it, it's always good to document it yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Uh, as I'm running a business myself, so it's definitely important to have documentation of each and every transaction, whether it's on the blockchain, whether it's on the exchange, it doesn't matter. Just have a record. Uh, it saves you a lot of time in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, um, well, lots of questions coming in. It's a little bit hard to keep up. Let's have a look here. Um, wow, now everybody's asking. Um, yeah, we. Do you see anything, Sukesh? I haven't. Oh uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like you can go ahead with your questions, and I can just follow up on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, do we have? A uh, to declare the coins we haven't transferred to our banks. For example, if you sell my Bitcoins in Coinbase, but it's still the money is in Coinbase, not transferred to my bank. Yeah, that would still be a taxable event. Every sort of, every sort of transaction where you give out uh, my, or your coins and get something in exchange, either if you uh, transact it for, uh, for another currency or if you transit into fiat money or, or a legal tender in the, the sense, uh, then that's a taxable transaction. So, so yeah, you, you would have to pay taxes on everything, even if it, you have US dollars sitting on your Coinbase account, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and actually someone uh, is asking uh, the, a question I was gonna ask you next about how are the airdrops, social tokens and ICOs classified? It's a bit of a broad picture because obviously what this is could could, uh, could differ. Uh, but, but if you take, um, uh, there are some examples here in the chat, but generally uh, everything's going to be taxed at 30%. Then there's the question on when you uh, you pay the taxes. But I would say when you get it, that's essentially a, a bit of an interest. Uh, it could also be classified in some other aspect. But I mean, it will be taxed at 30% at some point. But then there's the question of whether or not you can deduct any costs from it. And I would say that as long as you get uh, more currency than you, you've staked or whatever, that would be essentially taxed at 30% on what you received. So you can't really deduct any costs related to that uh, mm -hmm. if you're a private person. Mm -hmm. And also another very interesting question here. Uh, the, imagine this scenario, someone bought a traded crypto in different exchanges and they haven't have a clear picture of their gains. How can you do then? How, how could you declare that? And also uh, maybe a question for you later, um, Sukesh, is there any good accounting software one could use? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe you want to take it, Johan? Yeah. So what's Well, I mean, starting with the first way? question, I'll let you uh, talk about the accounting software because uh, I, I don't want to do any specific recommendations here. Uh, <laughs> but if you have a lot of transactions that you need to go between, there is also one question related to that. And if you do a lot of trading ups and down, yes, you have to pay taxes on every, um, every transaction, meaning essentially that you will have the burden of proof on, on what you've done. Uh, and if you don't have that, then you, know, you have to sort of, give them the best information you have. That's why documentation is very important. If you keep transaction between 
different uh, exchanges or if you, you travel or send a lot of cryptocurrency between different wallets that you own, everything there is going to be a taxable event. And there are some costs that you can deduct or use as your um, your ben or your value when you uh, deduct your costs. But uh, at the end of the day, you might end up actually having to pay a lot of taxes just for transferring and, and buying and selling. So it's... Yeah. Um, it is not very much made for for the current system we have because usually you do uh, you buy a share and then sort of you sell later yeah. on while, while sort of the crypto space is slightly different in terms of transactions and the, especially the gas fees yeah yeah and then yeah carry on sorry Sukesh. yeah i was just going to add like uh, in terms of the uh, second question about um, different exchanges and cryptocurrency softwares uh, tax softwares i mean there are a couple of them out there today uh, and uh, there are, uh, I think, only two or three uh, that really support the Swedish markets today. So uh, try to find all the information before you choose the right software. And also most of the softwares that are out there today, uh, sometimes you might not find the exchange uh, that you traded your uh, cryptocurrency supported over there. So uh, find the right software that's suitable for you uh, and for your transactions. So, and then that, that's the right decision for you. Uh, I mean, like even we are building a software, uh, I can just say honestly that uh, we can't really support each and every one of the exchanges out there. It's going to be uh, too much uh, for anyone or one single company to do that kind of uh, work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you might have to use multiple softwares uh, to get your taxes done. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the same logic everyone uses. So. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. Now that's that's very good explanation. And now moving on to a slightly different aspect is how is the mining, crypto mining classified? Can you give us some example into someone is uh, having some income through mining? Is it considered a business? Is it considered a hobby? Um, what would be the scenario there, Johan? This is again where it becomes very much into the specifics of your case. So this is only a general sort of advice on how to look at it. But I think if you sort of get into a certain level of mining, you should actually advise or you know get good professional advice because in in relation to, to being a business, there's also accounting rules and a lot of other rules that would be which would be applicable to you if you become. Um, larger or you know do a lot of mining but essentially every private mining that you do uh, as a private person or sort of if, if it's still on a hobby level that would still be subject to 30 percent of taxes um, but once you sort of start a mining factory in your own wardrobe or you know you do start to get a lot of larger sums then it might be classified as a, as a private business for you uh, and you you will have a lot of uh, rules applicable to you uh, accounting rules being one of them. So, so that's where you sort of, if you start to have regular and a lot of income and you're profitable on your mining, or if you sort of buy a lot of equipment, that's where you should start thinking about whether or not you're actually uh, a business and, and not a private person. I see, yeah, just, I see. Just so. to add on this, like, um, yeah, I have some personal experiences with this. I've uh, been uh, uh, working with mining for the last one to two years now. So uh, it, it's still a gray area, uh, to be honest, like we reached out to Scatterwork it uh, for clarifications. It's still unclear what exactly is considered as a business or as a ho hobby. So it's always good to um, uh, get some um, advice, whether it's with, uh, from Scatterwork it or like uh, uh, through your accountant, uh, get some personal advice that's uh, respected to your uh, particular transactions and your mining uh, activities. But at the end of the day, it always depends on the income that you generate. Uh, if it's too high of an amount in terms of profit, as Johan mentioned, uh, it, it will be better to have it run as a business uh, rather than as a hobby uh, activity. Yeah. And I think that the, the Swedish tax authorities obviously will help you to the extent they can, but it is very hard for them to give a super clear answer on when it becomes uh, a business because there's a lot of circumstances and, and, and once again, your personal sort of circumstances that, that are to be considered here. So even if you call the Swedish tax authorities, there's one called Skatterplusning and meaning essentially that the, the tax authorities question uh, phone box or whatever. If you call them and th their answer is not gonna be legally binding for them. So you should be aware that sort of the person that answers get a lot of answer or questions for, from a lot of people on a lot of different uh, questions uh, on sub different subjects. So 
they can't really give you a uh, crisp advice that will be legally binding. So a word of advice here is to, to not take that, that, that advice and, and you know, you know, go for it. And you only trust that one. You have to rely on different sources and also maybe talk to the accountant just as, as Sukesh says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit um, more complicated than we think. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, so, I have a few questions about uh, actually DeFi on the chat. And also I want to ask you, Johan, if you have any insights into DeFi. I have a few people um, asking about staking. Yeah, the questions also that I see in the chat are mostly related to maybe if you're a business and you do a lot of staking. Mm -hmm. um, but as a private person, that would still be a tax at 30%. Um, it's never going to be... Um, taxed uh, as a private income or, or um, uh, employment income, such as, as your salary would be. It will always be 30% as long as you're a private person. So it's going to be a, a, a capital asset or a capital gains tax applied to that. When you sort of become a, a more business-like, or if you have a business, or if it's even your company that does the staking, then there's there's a difference uh, in how that works. But but as a private person, everything will be taxed at 30%, either when you get it or, or at a later stage. That That's very clear. I see, I see, I see. And um, do you have any questions, Sukesh, that you picked up from yourself or from the chat? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, DeFi, DeFi, uh, DeFi itself is a huge concept, right? And maybe I want to break it down into uh, different uh, quick questions, uh, one-liners. So maybe if you have some insight, maybe you could share. Uh, so you you mentioned you just talked about staking. So. Uh, what happens with the crypto lending part? So people are giving out loans and people are taking loans in crypto. So uh, do you have any insight into that space? I think it's, this is one of the topics where they haven't really set down their foot in what it is. But I think, as I said, it will be taxed at some stage. So it's not that it's tax free. It's only a matter of, you know, will it be taxed once you uh, receive it? Is it taxed at, at some other level? But my personal guess would be that every time you receive something, you will pay taxes on it. Okay. Um, I see, I see. But I, I don't think that the Swedish tax authorities have sort of decided it on it finally. And obviously there will be clarifications or even court cases to, to clarify that further down the line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So also, do you have uh, any insight into like liquidity pools where you provide uh, uh, support for tokens uh, with liquidity um, by putting your tokens and you get some kind of reward from it. Sorry, the liquidity tokens. Yeah, I mean, that would be the tax the same way as I see it. Uh, obviously, there's a question here on, on the, the tax authority claiming it, it's income. And I, I'm not sure what they actually refer to when it's income. So if they can link to that, I think that would be very helpful to, to try to clarify. But my view is that it would be taxed as as private income for, for most people that are not businesses. Okay, okay. I, see. Oh, I received the link there, so let me, let's check it while we're, we're at it. Sorry, next question. Liquidity pools would be taxed also as capital income, okay. um, but it, it would be taxed, I, I guess, as I understand liquidity pools, and please correct me if I, I'm, I'm wrong here, but that would be either you receive something, you know, continuously, you, you get part of it in a, in a daily payout. The payout as such yeah. would be uh, taxed as, as capital gains. And yeah. then obviously when you take it back, you also have a, a smart fee that you pay to the network and that will also be sort of a, a separate sale as I see it. But I'm not sure this is e either clarified either. I, I know there, there are some companies who have asked questions to the Swedish tax authorities and got questions from them, which I guess you could use as, as some kind of guidance, but, but I don't think it's, it's uh, official guidance just as, as um, yeah. the, the tax authority could issue a separate guidance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I, uh, before we move on, we're still concentrating pretty much individuals, which is pretty good. Yeah. And then we're going to move on to uh, like crypto taxes for business. But I have very good, very interesting question here in the chat. Uh, when PayPal opens up for individuals to buy with crypto, how can they be taxed? Sorry, repeat that question, please. When PayPal opens up for individuals to buy with crypto, how can that be taxed? 
I've, I sort of interpret the question, so how can PayPal, uh, PayPal or these tax authorities know that I bought or sold uh, assets on PayPal? Yeah, and yeah, because... the short answer, I guess, is, is it's very hard for them to know that. But at the end of the day, I think it's inevitably going to be harder and harder to sort of hide from the tax authorities because the more people start to, to apply regulation, the more information, you know, Coinbase being listed, uh, registering with, with different authorities, there's, there's going to be information uh, distributed to different authorities and the Swedish tax authorities has a lot of information uh, agreements with other um, with other authorities so they could get uh, the information somehow but it is right now I think very hard for them to, to get all the information um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't declare it you're still committing a crime by, by not declaring it and, um, and doing that so that's that's obviously not a recommendation from my side. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and also, I just want to add one point to this. Uh, maybe you can clarify, actually. So if people uh, who have been trading crypto for the last couple of years, but they haven't uh, did the taxes themselves, or they didn't know that they have to do the taxes or submit the capital gains and stuff, can they still uh, rectify those? Uh, what, what is the timeline uh, for those? Yeah, you, you can rectify that by basically applying for reassessment. And there's also something called frivillerättelse, which is a, a correction if you, you want to, to um, declare your taxes retroactively. But I think the easier would be used to apply for a reassessment and to, to send in the, the applicable forms. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when you mentioned forms, I just thought, okay, what are the uh, forms that are relevant to the Swedish audience, like specifically individuals, uh, when it comes to uh, capital gains or, or the income from mining? I'm not sure I get the question. The forms. Uh, the, 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 I think it's the number of the form. I think it's like K4, was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Okay. So uh, sorry. I thought you meant farms, like in, you know, liquidity pools or, or something <laughs> okay, like for, no. farming. Uh, I thought it was some new uh, pr product I didn't know <laughs> about. Uh, so the forms that you do, I mean, obviously the, there's the, uh, the, um, the costs for, for mining here that was mentioned. And then I think that was gave the confusion to, to the person in the chat, but it, when you declare it as a private person, you use a form called K4, which is essentially the same four that you would, um, report your, your uh, shares or whatever, but, but it's in, in section D. So D is actually other assets um, where you would declare your, your Bitcoin. And there's actually a pretty good guide on the tax authorities webpage on how to fill out that form and specifically the, the D section, which relates to uh, other assets where, where cryptocurrency is one of them. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Uh, and uh, about, uh, I actually had one follow-up question on the topic of uh, mining. So yeah. you mentioned uh, there are different, of course, different categories for individuals and businesses, right? So say a user uh, has been mining for some time and uh, got some cryptocurrencies, but he hasn't sold, he haven't sold uh, maybe in six months, uh, but at, at the end of six months, he sold the cryptocurrencies and got paid in Swedish crowns. So uh, does he now have to report both the income uh, and also the capital gains uh, on these cryptocurrencies? Um, I, that was a very broad question. It, if you've been mining and, and got a lot of income, uh, that, that should be sort of declared continuously. So, so if you received something year one mm -hmm. from mining, that, that would have to be declared year one. But if you still hold the currency and then you sell it at a later point, Yes, that sale will also be taxable, but you could use, uh, depending on sort of how you are classified, you could use that as the cost for, for, uh, for, for declaring it. So you will reduce the tax rate on those uh, specific coins or, or your coins. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, not sure that was the answer to your question, but that's how I interpret it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I was just, um, uh, in addition to what you said, I think uh, one of the point, well, it's still unclear for me was, do you also have to uh, calculate capital gains uh, on this period of uh, six months or one year or whatever the time you hold this cryptocurrency? Uh, so if you made a profit, can you also, do you have to also report that in addition to what you report with the income? Uh, oh, you mean you get one Bitcoin year one and then uh, you sell it year three and sort of the increase in value or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, definitely if you, if you mine one, um, you should actually use that, that sort of, the cost basis, I guess. Yeah, you know, I mean, the cost basis, any increase from the cost basis would actually be uh, attributable to you. So you you have to take the lower 
uh, one. But but anything that you mine, I think that's actually, I mean, yeah, that's not clear for me actually. I I I can't really answer that straight yeah. away. So I, I'm, it, it is a very bit blurry, and I think this is where uh, it could definitely be good to seek professional advice rather than. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. And um, so now something, Johan, uh, was in the news in the past few weeks, NFTs. <laughs> so <laughs> any insight into the NFT space? I heard that here in Sweden, you don't have to declare NFT income if it's less than 50 grand, 50,000 sec. And there that, are taxes after the 50,000 sec in profit. I think that that's where the Swedish tax authority has to be, be clear. Uh, because obviously what you're referring to is something called hobby income. And that is if you try to sell stuff on on uh, eBay or, or Tradera, as we use in Sweden, the, the yeah. local equivalent. Or, or if you sell paintings. But obviously NFTs could be anything. And I think it will actually, you know, it, it depends on how they classify it. If it's just capital gains tax, then no, it, it's not taxable. If, if they would consider specifically NFTs to be sort of art or, or similar, then maybe you could exempt it. But, but that hasn't been cleared. So I would recommend, you know, being very transparent if you try to declare that because not declaring it and just ex, uh, deducting it would, would uh, probably be seen as, as not being really truly honest. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so it could be, but but it's not clear at the moment. Okay, so I don't think it's either defined as, as specifically art at, at the moment, at least. But but it's very new, and and there's a lot of things happening. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um, so that was my question about NFT. I don't know if anyone in the chat has any NFT questions, but um, yes. So now, so far, we concentrated more on the individual level. Uh, I just want to move on and give quick insights into the crypto taxes for business. So can you quickly give us some insight into how the crypto taxes uh, work for business like mining or receiving payments in crypto, et cetera? Well, yeah, here we get very technical, but I mean, on, on a general left, you have corporate gains tax and that's what you pay on your, your cryptocurrency. And then obviously in account to that, there's a lot of accounting rules and other things that you have to take in, in retrospect. It could get more sort of more complicated than that, but that's on a, on a very general level how it works. Mm -hmm. Then obviously if, if you are uh, if you're, um, accepting uh, cryptocurrency and, and, and do a lot of exchanges between money for people, then you would also maybe have to be registered with the financial um, inspection in Sweden. So there are other rules to consider as well, just apart from just trading. And then holding it is, is also a bit of a, a tricky thing because obviously it, it fluctuates in value. So, so you have to be very, um, yeah, you have to make sure that you are correct when it comes to um, uh, handling it within your books as well. Um, mm -hmm. Also, obviously, uh, Sukesh can probably talk more about this, but having a company in Sweden and, and, and working with cryptocurrency, even if you're sort of a project or if you're handling cryptocurrencies, that would also mean that you're probably flagged as a high risk customer with, with the banks. So there are a lot of things to consider here if you want them to, uh, to do business or involve crypto in your business. Um, yeah. I think that's sort of how generally I see it as, you know, I mean, wouldn't mm -hmm. want to go too much into detail because it was quite some time since I worked with it. So I, I don't want to go into any sort of recent that's developments fine. on it. That's fine. So Kesh, do you want to add anything else? Anything else? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, regarding the business aspect uh, of the handling cryptocurrencies, it's, it's definitely something that you have to talk with your uh, accountant. Uh, um, we have been uh, working with cryptocurrencies for the last two years uh, in our company. And yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a difficult topic, like most oftentimes, the accountants, uh, they don't really know, even though it's like a top uh, firm's. They don't really know uh, exactly this particular space. So uh, you have to explain to them what exactly is this, how it can be classified as, so they could give the accurate suggestion uh, for you to uh, mm -hmm. take care of it. Yeah. So very good, very good. So, um, well, we're 40 minutes in. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long. We try to keep things under one hour. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Johan, 
something? Yeah, I'm reading up on the question here regarding the um, uh, the declaration of private income and, and, and the specifically the, the um, other one refers to mining. So I was actually wrong about that. I must say that when I work with it, this hasn't been clarified, but it seems that it's actually changed a bit. So if you look at the Swedish tax authorities webpage and specifically the one on on the K4 and how you uh, deduct costs related to mining, it is actually uh, taxed as, as um, another income uh, you, and not K4, just as, as uh, someone in the chat pointed out here. So uh, apologize for that one. And as I said, this is not tax advice. So please refer <laughs> to your uh, your tax advisor or, or anyone that's, that's uh, up to speed with the current development on, on the crypto market when it comes to taxes, please. <laughs> very good, very good. And uh, wow. Anything else also you want to add to cash? Shall we do a quick demo about CryptoScat? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I think it's, uh, as Johan mentioned, like it's an unclear domain and uh, uh, things are changing very rapidly with DeFi and NFTs coming, uh, becoming mainstream now. So uh, yeah, once again, uh, this is not a tax advice. So we are just here to try to share our knowledge uh, whatever we know, whatever we learned uh, along the way. So uh, always reach out to um, experts. Maybe one final question here, which is a pretty good one. Actually. How nice is Skatteverket if you cannot prove your income? Uh, and, and I would actually say my experience is that they are very friendly and, and they try to prove it. Obviously, there's always the risk for money laundering. So I think that's where most of the question will be related to. But if you can show them credit card statements or you know anything that will actually show the amounts that you in a ballpark have bought for and, and it seems that it's pretty reasonable then i think they will accept it because at the end of the day you want to pay taxes and they want to make what's right so so i would i would say that if it's larger sums th then you might get more questions but as soon as you sort of if you try to declare lower or lesser amounts and you try to provide what you have and you try to explain the reasoning behind it i think they will be pretty nice but it's always important to make sure that you give them enough information to do their own assessment and that you do not lie because obviously that's a, uh, a punishable event where you could get fined or even jailed if it's, if it's serious enough yeah, yeah, and also uh, just on that point, like uh, whenever, even though if you are using some kind of tool or platform or whatever it is uh, uh, out there, uh, at the end of the day, you have to get like an accounting expert advice. The platforms doesn't really provide you that kind of uh, uh, compliance uh, or they don't give you like a promise that everything is accurate. So at the end of the day, you have to get an advice. So just be careful on that particular point. Uh, whether you're using our software or someone else's software, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good, good. And I also, I left my email address. So if you guys have any questions specific for Johan or Sukesh and even myself, please do reach out. I'll pass it on. I'll make sure you guys receive the questions that we haven't answered today. And um, yeah, so Sukesh, do you want to add yes. anything? Uh, yeah, I just want to quickly uh, talk about CryptoScat and what we are yes. doing at CryptoScat, um, if I may. So uh, maybe I can quickly share my screen. Um, yes, please. Let's see. Uh, can you see my screen? How many yes, I think we can. Yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we are a startup. I just want to lay it out there in the beginning. So uh, we have been working with CryptoScat for almost uh, uh, eight months now. Uh, so we have been developing the product. Uh, so due to our own personal issues with uh, handling cryptocurrencies, we thought there should be some better tool uh, to do this. Uh, and as we progressed, we saw that there are some tools out there, but also they lack certain uh, functionalities uh, and services. And when it comes to Swedish market, it was just like one or two tools which were really limited. Uh, so we thought uh, to build something um, and that's how it's, it all started. So since then we have been developing the platform. So it's near ready. Uh, so today I, I'm just I just gonna give you a quick sneak peek into the application. Uh, it will not be a demo, it's just gonna be a quick sneak peek. But uh, if you are interested uh, in using some kind of platform which can automatically collect data from exchanges, uh, automatically do some kind of calculations for you and generate reports for you so that it helps 
uh, when you're reaching out to accountant or scatterwork it, you can show these reports and try to get some advice from them. Uh, again, once again, this is not an expert advice. The platform doesn't provide you a guarantee or security. No other platform does that. So yeah, so this is just to help you out as a tool. Um, so you can uh, go to cryptoscat.com today. So you can uh, already sign up uh, for early access. Uh, and also uh, we are trying to ask a, a couple of questions that you have. So please try to write them down in the Google form. So we try to answer them or try to get you help uh, as we move along. And also when, when it is live, we will uh, notify you. So uh, yeah, you can just fill in your email address and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, so yeah, let me quickly show you the platform. So uh, it's not public yet, so it will soon be though. So it's a simple platform. So you come in, you log in uh, with your email ID. Uh, so you just select your country and so forth. Uh, and then you, you can already start uh, working through the process. So start by adding exchanges, uh, for instance. So uh, it's quite simple. So you just, uh, we already have a pre, pre, uh, set of exchanges that we support uh, in terms of the uh, platform today. So you can also see different blockchains that we support, uh, for instance, like Bitcoin, EOS, Ethereum, uh, Telos, Tezos, Tron, Wax, uh, and so forth. And also we have different exchanges that we support today. Uh, so I think we support more than 50 plus exchanges today, uh, but we will be rolling them out um, uh, uh, in different groups uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks uh, when we launch the platform. So if you have traded in Coinbase or Binance, you can just enter your uh, API keys, for instance, and then it will automatically fetch the data for you. So you can find uh, the guides which can help you uh, find these keys in your accounts as well. Uh, and then once you uh, imported the data, so you can already start seeing the transactions, uh, what kind of uh, transaction was it? Was it a deposit? Was it a withdrawal? What was the price? How much uh, did the fee uh, you pay? Uh, was it a long-term gain? Uh, how much was the gain uh, if it was a long-term gain, short-term gains and so forth. And then one unique feature that we uh, recently added uh, is the NFTs. Um, I hope, let's see if I can uh, show you some NFTs um, that I have. Mm -hmm. So definitely, it, people can keep track of their crypto. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so moving forward, like once mm -hmm. NFTs is becoming mainstream, so uh, you can start accessing NFTs uh, from here as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, yes, uh, it works. Uh, yes, so it's directly collecting the data from the blockchain today. So these are different NFTs that I have on uh, Wax blockchain, for instance. Uh, so uh, you can see the estimated values. You can see if you have something listed on the marketplace, you can see those active listings and also sold and bought and transfers and everything. And also we categorize them based on different standards. Uh, so right now we support uh, two uh, NFT standards and we are working to add support for Ethereum uh, NFTs as well. Uh, so this will be kind of like the first platform in the market uh, to support NFTs um, uh, in this space. Uh, and also finally tax reports. Uh, so we try to summarize everything into these different dashboards. So uh, once you generate the uh, tax reports, you can just download the Excel files uh, or the PDF files or whatever it is. And we try to uh, categorize everything into taxable incomes uh, and classify them as aid drops or mining or whatever. And also you can add those tags as well yourself. Uh, so you just go to uh, the transaction uh, and you can add a tag, say, okay, it's a mining transaction. So uh, it will be classified as that uh, when you're generating the reports. So it's just easy uh, to use tool. Um, and also, uh, yeah, it's not 100% ready yet. So we're working on it. Uh, once it is ready, we will let you know. So in the meantime, all you can do is just uh, go here and sign up. Um, so you can just fill in the information and we will get back to you once it's live in the next couple of days. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, that's yeah. pretty much it uh, that I want to talk that, about. That sounds really good. That sounds really good. So there's, um, if you're trying to keep track of your transactions, I think it's a very good overview to cash. And um, well, 
that's it guys, it's nearly an hour in. And I just want to thank Johan for coming um, and speak to us and give a quick overview about crypto stocks in Sweden. Thanks to Cash, CryptoScat, please go and check it out you guys, CryptoScat.com. And yeah, so I'm, that's it. So I'll see you guys next time. We try to do once a month. So stay tuned, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and you see the next meetup coming. Yep. Okay, bye. Right. Take care. Bye. Thanks for joining in guys, bye. Bye.